evening. Good evening. <laughs> Thank you. See a lot of familiar faces. The year seems to have passed really, really quickly. Uh, welcome to the first public hearing that we have this year. To, uh, yes, please. Does this work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Welcome to our first public hearing that we hold in Mount Vernon uh, every year for the purpose of listening to tenant representatives, tenants, uh, representatives of owners and owners, various organizations, uh, to hear what they have to say about the possibility of uh, our the formulation of rent guidelines for people uh, in rent regulated apartments and buildings whose leases expire uh, this uh, September 30th and whose new lease would commence sometime after October 1st of this year through the end of, uh, of well, through, I guess, uh, September 30th of next year. We have uh, only seven board members here. I'm hoping that the other two will arrive, but we do have a quorum. Uh, I'd like to introduce uh, the board members. First, uh, Genevieve Roche, who is a tenant representative, Carol Ann Cope, owner representative, Joe Whelan, public member, uh, I'm Jane Morgan Stern, Eddie Mae Barnes, public member, Ken Singer, uh, owner member, and Reverend Emma Jean Lofton Woods, tenant member. And we do have a new arrival, board member Elsa Rubin, who is a public member. Uh, so, uh, thank you. We're also, uh, where is she? Over there is, uh, you know, I think you probably know that Michael Rosenblatt, who you've seen year after year, he was our counsel. Uh, retired last, uh, I guess, several months ago, and taking his place as our counsel for the board is April Gray Huertas, who's right over there. Welcome, April. We're very lucky to have her. She's been terrific so far. And uh, not only is April uh, new this year to the public hearings, but the person who replaced Michael Rosenblatt as uh, deputy counsel to the division is Chuck Lesnick. Uh, you may know him. He's only been uh, here, well, it was 10 days as of last Thursday, so it's just a few more days that he's uh, been with the division. And we'd like to invite Chuck to say uh, a few words. And I don't want to neglect, by the way, Lou Farrell, our stenographer. Reporter. Thank you very much. Uh, having been on the other side as a public official for all these years, it's good to now be on this side of the process. Uh, there are a lot of people here who have taken your time. We really appreciate you come to speak. So we're going to try to adhere to the time limits of three minutes per speaker. If you represent an organization, we may let you go five or six minutes. But uh, say that when you're about to speak. But if you're just here representing yourself, uh, take three and uh, She's got a mean gavel, Jane, so uh, don't take it personally. We just want everybody to be able to speak. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, if you have a handout, please uh, bring it up to April, and she will pass it out to members of the board. Uh, again, if there's anybody, last call, or I, I guess when we're finished, I'll ask again. But if anybody wants to sign the sheet there up here, um, so why don't we uh, proceed? We have quite a long list. The first speaker uh, is Pat Monahan, tenant. Good evening. Good evening. Oh, there's no microphone there. Yeah. Jane, can I have that? I'll put it up. Uh, Jane, the microphone. Is it, oh, you took that one. 
Hexworth. Hexworth. Good evening. Uh, my name is Pat Monaghan. I live at 472 Gramerton Avenue here in Mount Vernon. Uh, I'm living on a fixed income, and thankfully my apartment is rent protected. If it weren't, I couldn't afford to live in my apartment. Every two years my rent increases by 9.5%, and it's getting up there. Uh, I hear of so many young people today who are working full-time, seniors, living on fixed income, young parents trying to raise children, who are spending 50% or more of their earned income on rent. And that means they're spending less on basic needs like food and clothing, saving for their children's education. I have a friend, Beth, who uh, was recently evicted from an apartment with five apartments in it, and uh, she had been living there for 21 years, was paying $1,200. And uh, she had to go, and the person who bought the apartment simply said, building said, um, I bought this as an investment, and uh, quite honestly, I don't care, I really don't care what it means to you. So she went looking for an apartment, and she found one that had been a, a rent regulated apartment, but uh, the person had died, and then it was renovated, and uh, it was taken off the affordable rents, and she now pays 2000 and she's already received an increase. So please keep the rent increases to a minimum so that people can afford to live without excessive financial pressure and stress. Thank you. Yeah, uh, before you, well, you already sat down. So do, any of, do any of the board members uh, have any questions for the speaker? Excuse me, Jane. I believe if her increase was nine, isn't that rent control? She went control, not rent. I don't know if anybody can hear you. No, Emma, you can't hear you. You have to repeat. Ms. Monaghan? Yes. Monaghan, right? Is it your apartment rent control? 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 Actually, I don't get a need a lease, but I get a nine and a half percent increase. Right. It's rent control. You're rent control. Oh, I'm not. Oh, right. But, but thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying that. Okay. How big is your bed? About four beds. Two bedrooms. Actually, it, it was a bedroom, but we made it into a bed. Yeah. It's not working. She's got to be able to hear it. <laughs> And, uh, uh, unfortunately, we only have one mic. Yeah, the, what, the mic over here doesn't work. So um, if we get into a dialogue like we just did, we'll just have to pass the mic back and forth. Otherwise, the stenographer won't be able to hear. Thanks. I'm going to try to um, go tenant owner, tenant owner, where it's uh, possible. So. If you're not called, if you were like second on the list and I call you third, I hope you'll understand. Uh, we now have an owner member, Silvio Solari. <coughs> owner representative. Good evening. My name is Silvio Solari. I'm a small Westchester landlord. Uh, I have some sad news to report to you tonight. After 30 years, I finally sold off my last rent stabilized units. I no longer have rent stabilized units. I do have other rental units, but I no longer have rent stabilized units. I come before you tonight not as a rent stabilized landlord, but as a citizen who is concerned, concerned about how low rent guidelines affects housing, especially affordable housing, how it affects the taxpayer who must supplement the uh, rent stabilized buildings, how it affects landlords, landlords who have been in business 30 years. 
are forced to sell their buildings because they no longer can maintain them. And also the tenants. The tenants who have to suffer with the uh, cutbacks in services. I tried cutting back my expenses. I tried being a good landlord over the years. And sometimes I cut back expenses not to impact the tenants. And sometimes it you know, fell back on me. It hurt myself. For instance, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, insurance. About three years ago, insurance rates were going through the roof. I had a cutback on insurance. I wanted to save some money. So what I did was I cut back on my deductible. And I also went from replacement value, uh, replacement to uh, value. And I'll tell you what the difference is. In replacement insurance, if your roof blows off and it's 20 years old, the insurance company gives you a new roof. If your roof is 20 years old and you have value, they come and they give you $1,000, which means they don't give you anything. I had a building which, if there was a major catastrophe, I would not be paid anything unless the building was totaled. And that's one of the reasons why I had to sell. You know, sometimes when you're going through bad feelings in your life, you feel alone. And that's what I felt. I felt alone. I felt like there was nobody else that was going through what I was going through. When I started talking to other landlords, I found out that many landlords are going through the same thing. I have something to show you. This is from the Daily News. April 3rd, 2014, this year. Other landlords are also suffering. Listen to the article. It says, city landlords just scraped by. Considering rents are so damn high in New York, you'd think it would be good to be a landlord. Not so, according to a report by Realty Track. Manhattan is the worst market in the United States for returns on rental properties, while Brooklyn ranks fourth. And I thought to myself, I wonder where Westchester stands in all this. Three minutes. That's fast three minutes. And we'll, we'll give you another uh, minute. Please let me finish the first page. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. What is Westchester ranking all this? So this, I went to Realty Track, and here's the list of the ten bottom rental returns in the United States. Ninth, Westchester ranks ninth from the bottom in landlord returns on investment. That's pretty bad. You're, there are 1,500 communities on that list, and we rank ninth. Now let me ask you something. Who is going to come and invest in our communities? The investors are not going to come here. Just think of it. Do you see affordable housing going up in Westchester? You see condos, you see luxury buildings, you see commercial property, you see stadiums, but you don't see affordable houses. You don't see the six and 10 family houses they were building in the 40s and 60s. I just want to conclude for now. I had more to say, but in conclusion, you need to be fair when you go through your guidelines. There were some years you were fair and there were some years you were not fair. That 0% incre increase, which was not an increase, that 0% really hurt, really hurt the landlord. It hurts the taxpayers. It hurts the uh, taxpayers who now have to uh, supplement the uh, real estate taxes on those properties that are no longer valued. I, in fact, I had a listing of a, uh, that I wanted to show you, but I'll have to do it some other time then, because that three minutes went by too fast. And it hurts the good landlords, landlords who have been there for 30 years, who are selling their buildings. And who they're selling their buildings to? Fly-by-night landlords. And most of all, it hurts the tenants. The tenants who have to suffer because of the cutback in services. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry okay. I didn't have enough time to do the well, whole don't, presentation. Don't, don't sit yet. Can I have the mic, please? Mm -hmm. Sorry to have to cut people off uh, after three or four minutes, but we have 14 speakers. Board members ask questions, make comments, so we can't be here all night. So, you know, try to get your, uh, your words in, in order and speak quickly. <laughs> Do any of the board members have any questions uh, for Mr. Solari? Okay, you're off the hook. Thank you. Uh, Jason Schicciano, um, who is an owner. I was going to. I forgot. So. 
I did, and then I forgot. So. You want me to sit? I'm happy to sit. That's okay. Okay. You want to give me those two minutes? Oh, okay. I'm going to try to alternate. Good evening, board members. My name is Jason Schigiano. I'm president of Lever First Associates in Yonkers, New York. We're licensed insurance brokers with 45 years of experience. Is one of Westchester's largest insurers for placement of real estate insurance. We represent some of the uh, area's largest insurers of real estate, including Chubb Travelers, CNA, Greater New York, Philadelphia Fireman's Fund, Tower Amp Trust, and Middle Oak. I've been asked once again by the Building Realty Institute and the Apartment Owners Advisory Council to comment on the state of the insurance market as it relates to apartment buildings in Westchester County. And I have some very simple factual data for your consideration. My message to you tonight is really the same as it's been for the last three years. In fact, if you check your records, in each of the past three years I stood here and stated to you I expected insurance premiums to increase. In each of the past three years, that's exactly what occurred. According to DHCR records, from 2010 to 11, insurance premiums increased by 2.5%. From 2011 to 2012, insurance premiums increased by 6%. From 2012 to 2013, insurance premiums increased, again, by 6%. You do the math, it's nearly 15%, a 15% increase in insurance premiums during the past three years, according to DHCR records. In the last two years alone, the increases have been almost 13%. I trust my track record for providing this board with accurate insight in predicting these increases in each of the last three consecutive years lends credibility to my comments for this year, which are as follows. Insurance renewal premiums will continue to rise, and DHCR data compilations for next year will once again show increases, likely in the range of 3 to 6 percent, but rising premiums will continue to fail to represent the true increased cost of insurance since, and I can't believe I'm saying this, I did not plan this with Mr. Sol Solari, since many landlords are increasing deductibles and or reducing coverage amounts to offset premium increases, in the additional self-insured exposures from higher deductibles and reduced coverage amounts are hidden costs which are not directly representative in DHCR summary data. For example, one landlord that we insure, again, not Mr. Solari, chose to increase his deductible from 10,000 uh, 10, to 25,000 to save $5,000 on a premium, on a premium that exceeds $160,000, and he still paid a higher premium than expiring. However, if he has a claim for, say, $30,000, he's going to pay $10,000 more out of pocket, even accounting for the premium savings. Once again, for the third year in a row, our office has not had a single landlord client in Westchester who's experienced a premium reduction. Not a single one. 100% have increases. Do I have 30 more no, seconds? You have, yes, absolutely. Thank you. In at, closing. At Keep in mind that upward pressure on insurance premiums is coming from multiple sources. New York is a multi-year designee as a judi judicial hellhole by the American Tort Reform Association, remaining under heavy influence from the plaintiff's bar. This ominous reputation means landlords and insurance carriers will continue to shell out hefty sums for lawsuits alleging liability, which continue to drive up premiums. And the Insurance Information Institute stated that despite nine consecutive quarters of gains on pricing, today prices are still right around where they were in 2001, and additional rate is going to be needed going forward because of low interest rates. Seven out of the last eight years have been the most active on record for natural disasters, such as storms, flooding, or tornadoes, in the last 25 years. Carriers are expecting more claims from more frequent disasters and are pricing accordingly. Please carefully consider this information relating to continued trend for landlords insurance increases. Thank you. Thank you. Don't, don't sit down yet. Any uh, board members have a question for Mr. Schiano? Okay. So basically, correct me if I'm wrong, 
that you're not taking into consideration the adjustment on the deductibilities I'm when sorry. you say that it, it's a 15% increase. That's, That's what the record said. But it's not including the deductibility, the changes in the deductibility, so this could be really 25% increase that we're impacted with? If, if landlords, if some landlords had not chosen to increase their deductibles, the increases would have been even higher. That's exactly higher what I'm saying. Higher than even 25%? Higher than, the, I, I can't say for right. certain. But, but it's, all right, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, we actually have, uh, several more tenant uh, representatives than owners, so I'm going to call on uh, some tenants all in a row. And the reason I'm standing is because I feel like when I'm sitting, I'm practically under the table. I'm short, the chair is low, the table is high. So, uh, next is uh, Tamara Stewart, tenant. Thank you. Board members and my fellow citizens. My name is Tamara Stewart. I live at 30 Park Avenue here in Mount Vernon. And I'm in the tenant leadership within Westchester Plaza. With almost 700 apartments located in its four buildings, Westchester Plaza is one of the largest rental apartment complexes within Westchester County. On behalf of the thousands of tenants who live in Westchester Plaza specifically and the city of Mount Vernon in general, I implore the Rent Guidelines Board to pass minimal increases of no more than 1% and no more than 2% for two-year lease renewals. These suggested moderate increase levels reflect the continuing economic hardship faced by many Mount Vernon apartment dwellers. The effective rate of unemployment in Mount Vernon remains high in the neighborhood of 30%, and underemployment is prevalent as well. Limited rental stock, preferential rents that get raised to market rate upon renewal, constant and often unnecessary individual apartment improvements, and an aggressive policy of taking tenants to court as soon as they fall behind in rent payments continue to contribute to elevated rents and high turnover in Westchester Plaza. On a recent trip to housing court where Westchester, where there were about 86 cases on the docket, Approximately 70 of them were Westchester Plaza residents. Management has been unwilling to work with tenants dealing with financial hardship, preferring to push existing tenants out as a means of increasing profits. Like me, many of my neighbors are rent burdened, spending 50%, 60%, or more of our modest incomes on rent. At a tenant meeting on May 22nd, we asked for a show of hands of people who were using more than 30% of their income to pay rent, and more than half of the 70 people in attendance raised their hands. While the stock market may be reaching new highs, many people's incomes are experiencing new lows. In partnership with Mount Vernon United Tenants, Westchester Plaza tenant representatives do our best to try and help our neighbors and keep people from becoming homeless. I know that it is beyond the power of this body to solve all of the problems faced by Westchester renters. But you do have the power to help offset high housing costs by keeping the rate of rent increases to an absolute minimum. Thank you for your attention and for all of your hard work and diligence in performing a difficult task. Thank you. Board, board members, any questions, Hi. comments? I don't know if I need it. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Stewart.
And next will be uh, Joan Wilson, tenant. My dog. Ain't she great? Good evening. I'm here representing and speaking for 17 of my renting neighbors here in Mount Vernon who are elders on fixed incomes. We are rent burdened, a term we recently learned from Dennis Hanratty. We didn't know about what that meant. Uh, Dennis, you're here, right? Yes. Thank you. Yes. We always need to get educated even as we get older. So for those of you who don't know officially, and people have used that term twice before, rent burdened is defined as spending more than 30% of your household income on rent. We didn't know that the federal government's Department of Housing and Urban Development had given us a special category. We thought we were just going through challenging circumstances and simply needed to try harder to make ends meet. For most of us, our rent is 70%, 70% or more of our total monthly income. That's ridiculous. If you do the math, you quickly realize there's very little left for utilities, food, medicine, etc. We're always in the red. We can never catch up, just like sharecroppers. You can never catch up. That's why we can count on meeting each other in housing court regularly, at the facing eviction on a regular basis. Even with SCREE, Senior Citizen Rent Increase Exemption, that freezes our current rents, we're still constantly harassed by our landlords serving eviction notices to us if our rents are just a few days late. Given the lengthy stagnation in this economy, Many of you younger folks here behind me, sitting here may find yourself in this situation sooner than you think. So I urge you all here at the board not to increase the rent rates so that we all don't become a nation of paupers by the time we reach our so-called golden years. Thank you. Thank you. Board members? Questions, comments? Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Uh, okay. Howie Ravikoff. He's an owner. Nice. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I'd like to thank you for the opportunity to speak. I know what I know. You'll hear what I have to say, and I know you'll try to understand the issues from my perspective. And for this, I'm greatly appreciative. I'd like to acknowledge once again the difficult task you have ahead of you. Each year, you hear two sides of the same story. I imagine it's very frustrating to review the situation, the same situation and to have to make a decision that affects so many apartment dwellers, maintenance workers, repairmen, construction crews, office help, and property owners. Each year I wonder why Albany hasn't simplified this process for you. Why isn't there a formula to establish a rent guideline between HUD and the CPI and a few other readily available and accepted barometers Albany should pass law and create a guideline, or at least give you a narrow range for a guideline, so that this board could then review it and finalize it. I find this process to be archaic. I commend you for your willingness to engage in this process and bring it to fruition. Thank you. Here's my story. My family owns a 29-unit apartment building in the village of Porchester. We run a decent building. We care about our tenants. I do what my father taught me to do, service the tenants to death. So here's an outline of what I'd like to call your attention to this evening. Water, weather, and what I call the Mrs. Lazama factor. Uh, number one, water. The cost of water is no longer something that we can all ignore. My water bill went up 11% year over year. I can't think of anything else in my life, specifically, that went up 11%, or even anything close to it. 
It went from $8,600, give or take, to $9,600. What's most interesting to me about this water bill is that I have no control over it, zero. I have no control over the cost per gallon, and I have no control over how much water gets used. I would never think to tell my tenants how much water they should drink, how often they should wash their dishes, or how many showers or baths their family should take. I have zero control over something I pay 100% the cost of. Number two, weather. We had a brutal winter. It was far colder and it lasted far longer than any other winter in recent memory. I cranked the heat, I had to. I burned $28,000 of fuel. With fuel costs about the same as last year, it's $7,000 more than the prior year. 25% increase, if I may be allowed to continue. For a minute. Thank you, I'll be quicker. Who shouldered, who shouldered that burden? I did, not the tenant. I have zero control over the weather. I paid 100% of the cost. Factor number three, Mrs. Lozano. Last year I stood before you and I talked about Mrs. Lozano. She lives in a two bedroom apartment, apartment 3G. She pays $737.77. The same apartment directly above her pays $1,600 a month. 66% different. I talked to you about how the costs associated with her apartment, tax, insurance, fuel for heat, water, the costs are exactly the same for the two apartments. They're market rate costs. They're not commensurate with her below market rate rent. So I conclude with this. The system that we live by, the system that gives you your regulations to create a guideline, it's archaic, it doesn't work. It doesn't serve anyone. This year, nothing has changed, right? Albany hasn't passed a law that gives you a formula. Albany hasn't given you an algorithm. You can't plug in the cost of water, factor in the, the weather. You can't factor in the cost of fuel, nothing. Okay, winds it up. Yep, almost done, thank you. The tools we have to work with are here. They're no better, they're no sharper, and they're no more balanced. So forgive me if I ask you for what is the absurd to deal with an absurd situation. Please give me a guideline to bring Mrs. Lazama's rent up to the point where the rent matches the costs. I ask for, if you would, 216% increase or $861.23. <laughs> Is that only for Mrs. Lozano? It's a, it's, it, it's a low rent increase. So if you would, where the most recon, recent basic vacancy lease was executed six years or more prior to the date of the renewal lease. I believe that's your language. Isn't, right. isn't she the senior citizen you spoke about last year? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so if she's a senior citizen, she's either qualified for screen which freezes her rent, which in turn gives you a tax credit. Am I correct? And I'd be happy to give you the example of numerous tenants in my building who don't meet that qualification. But she, but she just one. I'm sorry? But she's one tenant. She is one tenant, as there are several whose qualifications meet the general criteria I'm offering. And they have a, a below credit. market rate rent. And you get a tax credit for those apartments. I'm, I'm happy to deal with those circumstances. Those are circumstances, as I understand it, I cannot initiate. Anybody Just else? Jeff? Quick one, I think you'll be able to hear me. What was the six years or the low vacancy? What was the, what were the criteria there for what you recommended? I believe your, your language is when you decide on a guideline, I, I believe it's the following. Where the most recent vacancy lease was executed six years or more prior to the date of the renewal lease. So there's criteria with which you can give a guideline that meet, meets a bare minimum. So if you gave a one or a two or a three or a four percent minimum, these rents would bump up by a number of single digit dollars. Rents commonly in this category that, that follow this definition could potentially be given a different guideline. I just wanted that one answer, thank you. May I ask a question? Yes. Is Mrs. Lazamer the only <laughs> tenant you have that you're having this problem with in terms of the no, dress? Okay. No, ma'am. But she's the one that has the largest uh, percentage difference? I, she's a person I spoke about last year, I and I thought it was important to bring to this uh,
Guidelines Board attention, a similar scenario. The same scenario exists today as it did last year. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Dennis Hanready. Dennis, you all know me quite well. I testify virtually every year, and I've reserved to be able to come back here at the White Plains to give a more detailed thing because I know the numbers have just come out. I know the numbers have just come out, so I don't. I haven't had a chance to peruse them, so I'm just going to talk about some general things. But I'd like to at least start with a response to this issue of the last speaker. Uh, you guys deal with uh, renewal renewal guidelines. The, the real issue, and I've been talking about this for years, is the vacant. That's where the that's the goose that laid the golden egg. You know, don't talk about 2% or 4% of uh, these formulas over six years. When an apartment becomes vacant, landlords double and triple rents. They're allowed a 20% legal increase, and then they, if they do some work, they can raise around 140 of the cost. And they don't have to report that. It's only if an incoming tenant who usually doesn't know what their rights are, challenges it, and they have time prescribed within four years. If not, it becomes the legal regulated rent anyway. So we have all kinds of legal and illegal abuses of that uh, with rents going up dramatically. That's what's seen the, the virtual disappearance of rent regulated units to, to rent out at this time. New York City, I know we're not New York City, but New York City has lost over 300,000 uh, rent stabilized apartments because of high rent vacancy decontrol. Pat Monahan, one of my board members from Mount Vernon United Tents, referred to a decontrolled unit in her, her building. How would that just happen? That's happening increasingly in Mount Vernon. So many buildings, all of the units are really right on that cusp. They're $1,800, $1,900 on a vacancy. They're going to get over the $2,500 mark. Like I said, they're entitled to a 20% vacancy, which if it's $1,800, that's going to bring it to almost $400 to $2,300. $2, they figure out the calculations, what they have to do, they have to put a new kitchen in. All of a sudden, it's $2,600, no longer covered. Tamara talked about that. A lot of the units in her complex did the same thing. She mentioned preferential rents. I think people have got to keep that in mind also, preferential rents. I deal with that on a regular basis. Because of the guidelines that this board has allowed over the years and other giveaways under the state rent code, a lot of rent regulated rents are beyond the market now. So landlords engage in what they would call preferential rents. They rent the rents for a lower rent than they, they're legally entitled to because they can't get it. It's actually exceeded the market. And that's a result of this board's work. I see that every day. And Tamara mentioned her building, plenty of rent, rent, uh, preferential rents. And one of the real killers on that, it used to be if you had a preferential rent, that would continue on to the balance of your tenancy. And the landlord couldn't bring it up to the uh, market rent or the least stabilized rent until you moved out. Now they can do it upon vacant on lease renewal. So some tenants are getting hit with five, six, seven hundred dollar increases upon renewals. So it's another, you know, little thing in the law that really burdens tenants. And I'm glad they brought the issue about rent burden. I mean, my agency, the great majority of work we do is eviction prevention. It's a labor intensive kind of work and we're just killing ourselves trying to keep people in their homes. They mentioned 50%. Some people spend 60, 70%. I mean, it's a regular basis. It's heartbreaking to see what happens on, on these things. We see it all of the time. Uh, this board has got a minimal role to play. I know we can't reduce rents and things like that. We can't make a major difference. But there's plenty of that out, and I'll have some at the next meeting also, but about the unaffordability crisis that we're still living in. I mean, everybody is rent burdened. Virtually all the people that we deal with are rent burdened. I bet everybody in this room who's here is rent burdened on someone, spending more than 30% of their income for rent. I was at a meeting with Tom DiNapoli when he came, Tom DiNapoli, the state controller, issued a report earlier this year up in Albany, and we were there at our annual lobby day for the Neighborhood Preservation Coalition. And 50% of rent, the rent is statewide now are rent burdened. I mean, we're living in a crisis times, but unfortunately it's under the radar for so many people. This board has got that uh, legislative responsibility to do the right thing. So I'm asking you, uh, once again, as I do every year, to freeze the rents. New York City, Bill de Blasio has taken a very bold position calling for rent freezes in there, doing this the same thing that we've done. Now, people say, well, they've been getting higher increase over the time. 
But their rents, if you look at their rents versus our rents on there, the rent stabilized, their rents are historically lower than ours. And that's a direct result of the work of this board before most of you were on, back in the late 80s, early 90s, and I've given you guys data on that, on the, the evils of uh, the highest comparability standard, when nine out of 11 years, this board voted for a vacancy rate of 100% highest comparable, which is an open invitation to landlords to legally, or mostly illegally, raise rents uh, beyond everybody's ability to pay. Ever since that time, and I said that to this board at that time, with one stroke of the pen, when they did that, they did away with affordable housing in Westchester County, at least for the rent stabilized tenants. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Uh, Gisela Monkey. I hope I pronounce. I, I say the same thing every year. Did I pronounce that correctly? Yes, correctly. Yes. Good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Gisela Monkey. Oh, my name is Gisela Monkey, and I'm from Boca Realty. Uh, as we all know, we had a very harsh winter, and it a lot of damage to our buildings. All right. Got our steps, roof. In order to keep the property in good condition, we have to have some kind of an increase. Because otherwise, it falls all apart and you will have slums again. Uh, we are trying very hard to keep the neighborhood in very good condition. Also, the heating bill this year doubled. The water bill also was a tremendous increase and in also the taxes. And I really feel that we should stop this with the taxes. The tax increase should be the increase for the building. Somebody has to pay that extra money. And some of the costs, and we try very hard to keep the buildings in excellent condition. Only the tenant, the tenant and the owner, are benefiting by an increase, okay? I'll make it very short, and I thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I, I believe Ms. Monkey is, is the last owner representative. Everybody else are tenants except for one mystery person. But did you say that? Oh, no, I just oh, said that you were the last owner representative on the list. Oh, oh, oh. Everybody else is a, uh, a tenant representative or a tenant except uh, one mystery person who's uh, last on the list. So uh, next will be... Uh, Alexia Graf. Alexia Graf? Oh, there you are. I agree with what some of the form other tenants said. The, what, what these landlords are asking for rent are ridiculous. They need to have some kind of a guideline where if it's a studio apartment, a landlord can only charge up to X number of dollars. A lot of these landlords, all they want to do is collect rent. They don't want to fix anything. And as soon as you complain, as soon as you complain somewhere for some advocacy, then they're looking to bring an eviction proceeding against you to tell you if you like my current landlord. If you don't like it, get out where they, uh, they come into your apartment whenever they feel like, they don't knock the door, and they think, well, it's my building. And that's not right to a tenant. And um, the other thing is, uh, like I said, it's been an extremely bad winter this year. They're, they provide you with very little heat, and when you get sick, nobody wants to hear <coughs> that you got sick because you, you walked around your apartment with a jacket on. I mean, that's ridiculous. So something needs to be done. With uh, I understand that tenants are, uh, landlords are allowed to get an increase, a cost of living increase, because the cost of the water has gone up, the cost of the oil has gone up, but um, Tenants are paying 80, 90 percent of their income just to have a roof over their head. Some, something needs to be done here. And, um, you know, 
Um, there, there, there has to be some compromise. It, it's a give and a take situation. Not that the landlord has all the rights and it seems like the tenant has no rights. And I'm sure I'm not the only tenant that feels this way. Thank you. One second. Um, Ms. Graff, I think there may be questions I don't, for you. I don't have oh, I thought I, I thought I just okay. didn't want to leave. Okay. Ms. Ms. Cope has a question. I have a legal question first. Can I ask who her landlord is? It's not really relevant to what she's talking about. Yes, it is. Why? Because he's threatened her? And he's also... she can file a complaint to the agency. Yeah, that's, 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 that's really... Okay. Okay. That's the point. That's yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, <coughs> David Locke. Walklear. Good evening. My name is David Locklear. I thank you all for coming out to uh, make a very difficult decision. My rent is a thousand dollars a month. My net pay is just over three hundred dollars a week. Thirteen hundred dollars roughly a month I bring home. <coughs> Con Ed bill averages about $75. I'm now left with uh, two and a quarter to eat and have car fare. You do the math. It's very hard to survive. 70% is a low percentage of, of what is taking of my income, that it's more like 90% for sure. I can't afford it, I'm struggling, and it's painful. Juggling the various bills, short this one, this month, pay a little more here, that month. Try to get an odd job to make the difference once in a while. And if, we're, if it were not for the odd job once in a while, I'd certainly be in the street. It's not an if. I would certainly be in the street if it were not for an odd job here and there. People are struggling. And with the preferential rent, with working and volunteering with Dennis, I see it all the time. Uh, market value, this. Preferential rent, this. And people are struggling with it. I have women crying about how they're having trouble feeding their kids. And it's painful. We need your help. We need zero increase to be repeated just once more. Thank you. Anybody? I'm not sure of this next name. Is it Herminio? It's Simpson. It's, uh, the last name is Simpson. I, I apologize. I cannot. You just tell us your name. Hermione. Hermione. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Hermione Simpson. I live in Williamsburg, up the West Coast of Florida. I live in the Williamsburg building of the West Chester Plaza. And um, what I cannot understand, the first year I came in, they refused to give me two years lease, not knowing that because they wanted to increase the rent after the first year. And then I'm, I'm coming to the second, end of the second year, there's another increase. For a small two-bedroom apartment, I'm paying $1,676 a month. That is over, that is over 65% of my income. And the service has de deteriorated in such a way, they have a, what they have done is that they cut the staffing and so the service has deteriorated. When the other day there was a rain and someone apartment leaked down into the apartment, they sent someone to fix. It was half done. My awnings and blinds are still laying on the floor. After two months, nobody came to finish it or put it back. Okay, and when I went to the manager's office, she said, oh, I will send someone. No one has been there. The floor is lifting up. 
No one has been there on pain, and I have not been late with my rent. Except for this month was two days late. They charged me twenty-five dollars for two days late. And that is the first in three years. I don't think that anyone should consent to get an increase, and there should never be an increase. We need to have a rent freeze. Because the, 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 the landlord hasn't done anything about the service. They remove some of the porters, they scatter them all over, and so one porter is now working three, four buildings. The service is deteriorating, and we're paying more rent. And now they're asking for another rent increase. I mean, that is unconscionable. And on the seaside of the, the half bathroom, there's every single month, there's a note saying, you cannot use your bathroom. Now how do you pay for something you cannot use? <coughs> it has nothing. The plumbing is out of control. Something has to be done, and we cannot. I mean, if, if you want my opinion, I think, if every tenant in this building would agree, we should get an attorney, we should escort our rent until they do something better for us. But we are paying for service we are not receiving. And that rent increase is out of the question. Thank you. I'm sorry. I just don't sit down, please. We may have some. I have a question. Did, did I hear you correctly? Did you say that? Your rent was paid two days late, and, and there's twenty-five. And you paid a twenty-five dollar. I did pay a fine. Twenty-five dollars. April? Yes. Is that? Wait, if it's that a lease. is no. That's that a lease. Yes. No, but not for two days. I did thought you have a. a um, five and this is the first time. The first time in three years. Yeah. Eight. Check your lease and, and make sure that that is. They said, you, they, said, they, they said, I think you had about five days leeway. We were like three days. Well, does anybody uh, have any questions, board members, comments? No, no, I'm, you can, if you want to speak, you can sign, come up and sign the list. Well, there's no such thing as full. So. <laughs> You're welcome to come up and sign and sign as a speaker. Thank you very much. I mean, I don't want to jump. I rush in. No, 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 Put yeah. your name and printed, a number. Printed, sign it. No, just put your name. And a, and whether you're a tenant or an owner. I... Hello, good evening. My name is Michelle Webb. I'm 42 years old. I have lived in Mount Vernon my whole life. This is the first time I've been at a meeting at City Hall, Mount Vernon. I guess I need to come more often. <laughs> <laughs> what I have to say is, um. 40% of my income goes toward my rent. And that includes me working overtime, spending time away from my family. Like what quality of life my family have with me working overtime every week. Every week I do one shift overtime. So my family is suffering right there. That's a burden on them. I'm, re I'm really here to speak about my friends and family. They can't be here because they're working a second shift. They're working another job just to pay their rent. Eight out of my 10 friends receive government assistance just to help them pay their rent. They have children to feed. They also have daycare. While they're at work, working sometimes 12 hour shifts or 16 hour shifts, the babies have to go somewhere for the day until the other parent can pick them up. But it's very sad that I see eight out of my 10 friends receiving government assistance and they're still complaining it's a burden to them. More than 50% of their income is going toward rent, probably more. All I have to say is it's really stressing everybody out. Everybody's worn out and I could definitely see it in a lot of, a lot of my friends and family. We do not need another tenants, another raise or increase in the rent. Thank you very much. Board members? Anybody? 
Thank you, Ms. Webb. Lawrence Marable. Are you Lawrence Marable? Okay. Uh, all right, here's the, the mystery person. I don't know if he's a, I don't know if it's a he or a she or a tenant or owner, but we'll find out. It uh, looks like H. Logan. Is there a Logan present? Well, we're not going to find out. Michelle Martin. Do I have to come up here? Yes, please. Just wait, wait, Ms. Martin. Come, slow down. Speak into the microphone. Okay, thank you. Can everybody thank hear me? Oh yes. I just, you know, everybody. The landlord's talking about how bad weather is in the winter, and you know, if you have a good winter, are you willing to give money back? I mean, you want to ask for money? <laughs> funny because if you know you can we ha did have a bad weather a winter <clears throat> excuse me but if we have a mild winter this year are you willing to give the money it, there has to be a compromise I guess you know so that's it my, my question was like a little sarcastic but mm -hmm. you get you we get the idea mm -hmm. that point we got it. Uh, last on the list is uh, Debbie Carter. Yeah, that was, I, I put them on the cards. <laughs> It's on. Oh, okay. Uh, good afternoon, everybody here. I haven't been in this building in a while. Um, I have to say thank you, Dennis Hardy, um, for the many times he has saved me. advice, help, hold my hand, because where I live, um, if there's an issue about being late with the rent, um, there's a lot of stress, and um, I'm a single, I'm a widow, raising a young man who's 14, and uh, I'm in a safe building, but like I said, there's a lot of things about how uh, my rent every year goes up, and my only grievances that I want to share here this evening is if you fall behind and you go to the tenant association, Dennis or whoever's there, um, as far as that's the only, the only um, avenue that I could go to because to go to a legal aid um, representative here in Mount Vernon is a sham, a joke. I have to laugh because that happened to me where I had to use, I had to exercise that um, legal process. Thank God I could go to White Plains. I was treated with dignity, respect. They listened to me, they helped me. I would never come to Mount Vernon for any legal, as far as using the lawyers here. I had to use a copy machine one time for documentation. They wouldn't let me use the copy machine. They told me it was broke, okay? Now, um, when tenants do fall behind, I think the board needs to, because it goes hand in hand. You only have Dennis as the only source of, of power here to help you. When they tell you you need to go seek a legal aid attorney, like I said, it is a joke in Mount Vernon. Okay, it's a waste of energy, because they only want to tell you, I can listen, I can't help. I can't hold your hand, I can't be there. So you have to do all your homework by yourself. 
whatever it takes. And I, that's what I had to do. And thank God for the courthouse in White Plains that I had to go to to help me with something that was related to a landlord issue that I'm still fighting. You know, and like I said, thank God the dentist office is open and available to people that don't know all the ins and outs of the legal system, how to fight for yourself, okay? So y'all need to look into the legal aid, uh, into, that, into that department here in Mount Vernon, because they should just tear the building down. And when you go to the courthouse here in Mount Vernon with those kind of issues, the people there at behind the desk is just as bad. If anybody needs a makeover in Mount Vernon, they should do the legal aid ties to the courthouse. They all need to be looked at. That's, you need to address those things. So that's it. Yeah. I just want to be sure, White Plains, do you mean the Supreme Court Library where they help citizens? Did you mean Legal Aid White Plains? Do you mean DHCR? What do you mean White Plains? Just so I'm okay, clear. Okay, I'm in the courthouse in White Plains. Okay, so they have the public assistance library yes. and so on. No, not the library. I'm oh. talking about what they have available there. If you do need an attorney, that will sit so down. We'll sit down and look at your papers, whatever it is, okay? Whether you can't speak Spanish, whether you don't know all the terminology, mm -hmm. they will sit down and they will put your case together. Okay. Uh, just to clarify for other yeah. people, so if that's the Supreme Court, it's in the library in White Plains. No, I'm talking about my, um, the It's the same courthouse. floor, it's not in the library. Uh, where, where is it? It's the same floor, but it's not in the library. It's not in the library. It's across the street is 111 Martin Luther King Boulevard. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so y'all need to look into that because if anybody gets into a legal battle that they have to fight a, t a landlord, you don't have that kind of power. Even though the dentist can help you, you still need to have an attorney, and the attorneys that they have there is just it's just a waste. Thank you. Um, don't, don't sit down. May I know your art, your the building where you leave your address? My building. Yes. I have no, um, no that's not allowed. So, I don't have to give that if I don't want to. Because she'll, there'll be repercussions. Yeah. No, I, 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 oh. but I'm just saying, if you need someone to represent you, just don't go to Mount Vernon. Oh, All right. Wait. Other than Dennis. Oh, you want this mic? All right. I, I just want to point out to, to you and everybody. Can we have? Quiet, okay, we, we don't have any jurisdiction to deal with issues involving attorneys, legal aid, or otherwise. I, I just want everybody to, I think everybody pretty well knows that, but I want to make it really explicit. Uh, and, uh, well, basically, that's what I was going to say to Ms. Carter, that Though what you're saying like really touches mm -hmm. touches me, and I'm sure some of the other members. But our our purpose is to make certain that the, that we pass guidelines or do not pass guidelines. Mm -hmm. Basically, that's our responsibility. So your legal issues, as you have mentioned uh, numerous times, um, not running United Tenants is someone that you address that too, but for this board, we are solely here to make sure that the rent guidelines for Westchester County ETPA apartments mm -hmm. are enacted. Okay. Well, I just wanted to share that. I mean, I know nobody touched that that um, topic, but um, it goes it goes just like if you had ice cream on top of an ice cream cone, because if you fall behind and you need legal representative with um, someone to, to advise you, other than Dennis, to help you. You know, you might need an attorney, and the first thing they're gonna say is, okay, go to legal aid, okay? Legal aid don't have to. Why should they? They, they, they get paid, it's a very comfortable job. Okay, they just Ms. Listen. Carter, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're repeating yourself. So. All right, that's okay. And we still don't have jurisdiction for okay, but over still, attorneys. So thank saying. you. Anybody else? They need to have better. Ms. Carter is the last person on the list. If there's anybody else who wants to speak, let me know right now. Um, all right, come on up. All 
All right, I'm, I'm going to ask you to sign the list right after you speak. So. Okay, that's no problem. Good evening, everyone. My name is Maya Banks, and I live in the Lenox in Westchester Plaza. This is my third year there. This is her first year there. <laughs> this winter, yes, it was bad. I have a two-bedroom. My second bedroom was supposed to be my daughter's bedroom. No heat. And this is a continuous thing. And everyone keeps telling me, more or less, the managers were coming. They assess it. They turn it up. They turn it down. I don't know what they're doing. I also had a flood in my apartment due to the poor roofing. I also paid for this roof along with other tenants that's in the building through MCI charges. These charges, I don't know why I paid them because this was work that was done before I moved there. It was supposed to already been tacked onto the rent and not separate. I also paid for a boiler that's not always working. It's always being turned off. I paid additional money for a terrace windows that I had to wrap with plastic. Now I have mold accumulating all in the corners of my bedrooms, living room, any window. Also due to the flooding that was in my apartment due to the roof. No one has come to assess the damage as of yet. And they had a court date last Monday. They did not show the court. But they did call me and ask to have a meeting face to face. And I told them this is too late. I already wrote the letter asking for them to come. I waited the 10 days, I went through the process, no answer, but now they wanna have a face-to-face -face with me. It's too late. I need to have something done and I need it now. I'm asking for them not to increase my rent because really and truly the services that we're getting does not deserve it. They do not comply. Thank you. If, I, if, I, if I'm correct, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm not, you can file uh, necessary documents with the division, DHCR division. Which I've done that. Okay. And they already gave me two docket numbers. I also have the Department of Buildings that came, gave me four violations for my apartment. Okay. So far, I haven't had any decrease in my rent due to the non-services or anything. I'm still paying $1,700 in change. I'm also out on comp from New York City Transit. Today was your process. A number of uh, a number of people who got up and spoke have thank the board for our work. Sometimes you aren't happy with it, sometimes you are. Uh, it's really we who should thank you for coming out, for speaking, for letting us know the issues that you see uh, are important in helping us to determine whether the uh, there should be an increase, and if so, uh, what the appropriate increase should be. So I just, on behalf of the board, want to thank everybody here for coming out and for speaking. Uh, um, there being no further business, uh, I'll ask for a motion to adjourn in a moment. I just want you to know the next public hearing uh, is tomorrow night in... Uh, in Yonkers, in the Riverfront Library at 7 o'clock, we have a third public hearing in uh, White Plains on, on June 9th. The, as we did last year, we have a meeting uh, scheduled for Monday, June 16th, for the tenant members of the board and the owner members of the board to make presentations uh, on behalf of their respective uh, constituencies. And uh, finally, on Monday, June 23rd, we'll have rebuttals by the uh, board, the tenant and the owner board members, and that's when the vote will be, or the uh, percentage increase, if any, will be discussed and voted on by the board. So, we'll have a motion to second. Joe, uh, made the motion to adjourn. Oh, I'm sorry, Caroline Coach made the motion to adjourn. Adjourn tomorrow.
Uh, Joe Whelan seconds it. Any discussion? <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you all very much. That was a great meeting, Jane.